Tutorial Podcast, a podcast offering discussions and tutorials on nerdy subjects for people who aren't necessarily nerdy themselves. With you today is myself, your nerdy tutor, George, and with me here today, future Royal Rumble participant and probably entrant number 27, <laughs> my mom. I would hope I'm, a, I'm 27. 27 oh is gosh. a good number. Yeah, I see that. So, this weekend on Sunday, we watched the Royal Rumble. It's the kickoff for what they consider Re- WrestleMania season. The big deal with the Royal Rumble itself is that you get a chance to get to WrestleMania. So uh, we're doing a review of a WWE wrestling pay-per-view. This one's a little bit more unique because of a special match they have called the Royal Rumble. Well, actually, two special matches called the Royal Rumble. Well, they have one for the women and they have oh, one for the men. men. They have one for the men and then now one for the women. This is the third year they've done one for the women, too. Um, so it's been interesting for the last few years to see the, to see the cool stuff that happens in there because... Again, they're going for quite a bit of time. Well, and okay, so so the Royal Rumble. <laughs> I would love to be in the audience for one of those. The Royal Rumble is literally something where every you start with one wrestler. Well, actually, two wrestlers. You start with two wrestlers, and every ninety seconds, a new wrestler comes in, mm-hmm. and there's as many wrestlers in the ring as haven't been disqualified. The only way to be disqualified is to go over the top and have both feet hit the floor. The best explanation I've heard yet. So, um, so I mean, there, there, are, there is the possibility of having way too many people in the ring. I think the most we ever saw was eight, maybe six. We, we maybe saw, like, maybe, I think, eight for, the men, for either the men's or the women's yeah. Royal Rumble. There's been as many as, like, 10 to 11 in, a, in the ring at once. It's usually not that common because it really starts getting awfully impacted inside there. And um, it leads to somebody like a Brock Lesnar or a Bronze Bowman just kind of coming in and just be like, you go over, you go over, you go over, you go over. Cool. This ring's sl- a little bit more clearer, so we a can do A little more stuff. manageable. A little bit more manageable. Yeah. So those are the big matches, but we watched a couple of the other matches mm-hmm. as well. So um, we didn't watch the pre-show. because There, it, there was a pre-show? There was an hour. I, I missed that because I was still having my nails done. It's okay. I, was, I swear nothing really happened. I needed I needed my pedicure. It's okay. I We all have our vices. Yeah. Um, so we got in partway through between a match between Roman Reigns and King Corbin. Now, these two are fighting because they don't like one another. Baron Corbin now knowing, calling himself King Corbin because he run won uh, a, a tournament called the King of the Ring, and now he's being carried out by ballets on like a like one of those uh, stanchion sort of things where he's on like in, he's on a, 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 what we call a litter. So. Um, in, in Baron Corbin and Roman Reigns don't like each other. The stipulation this time, though, was that it's a falls count anywhere, which means that you could fall, you, that you could cover a person in a pin anywhere in the arena. This time, though, they were at a ball, a baseball park, and so they literally went all the way through to a dugout. Yes, they did. Um, this particular match was a little bit of fun because you got to see a couple other wrestlers in there. Um, that kind of showed up out of nowhere at one point. And they basically, after like their first few minutes, they basically never returned to the ring at all. And they're literally going through the audience. The audience is like, the audience, if they wanted to, could get involved really quickly and easily. And and, and what hand, okay, I assume if you get involved, you get tossed. Yes. Okay. Yes, there, there's numerous instances where um, fans have rushed into the ring Try to get in on the action, and then everybody jumps them. The most, the one of the more famous examples um, is they have a Hall of Fame ceremony every year to induct people into the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, and this last year, they um, inducted the uh, Hart Foundation, which was a tag team between uh, Bret Hart and his brother-in-law Jim Neinhart. Um, and his daughter, who is uh, Natalia, is actually you know was in helping induct him. Some fa- now, mind you, it's a wrestling ring or or stage, usually the entrance ramp. Usually, yeah. this time it was in the ring, and it's surrounded by WWE wrestlers who are all in like you know like they're all going to like a winter formal or a prom or something. They're all there to they're dressed up. They're dressed up nice, like they're going to the Academy Awards. Or something. Yeah, they're going yeah. to like an award ceremony, which they're kind of are. Yeah. Some fan decided that he was going to rush into the ring and try to beat up Brett the Hitman Hart, one of the 
one of the best technical wrestlers of all time. He got into the ring because nobody knew who he was and what was going on. And then the second they realized they were, he was attacking, you know, Bret Hart, a dozen different wrestlers like got in there and basically, you know, surrounded him, started beating the fan up and dragging him out of there. Um, like he, the guy got like, I think a, like almost got a busted jaw because one of the wrestlers hit him too hard on the face, not realizing it was his face. So this has happened on this has happened that's happened before. It it doesn't happen very often because most fans are smart enough to know not to get into the ring with these big guys. For 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 record's sake, I am a six foot one to six foot two, depending on what kind of convenience store I'm leaving. <laughs> I I I, I'm, I thought you were taller than that. No, I'm only about six two, give or take. Okay. Um, about six two, three hundred plus pounds. I am not going into... I, I have been up close to these wrestlers before. You think they look big when you're in the audience. They look much bigger when they're right in front of you. They are huge. And I don't want to mess with these guys, even if they are smaller than me. Uh, like, yeah, they're pretty pretty, pretty muscular. They've been, they've been hitting the weights. They've been hitting the weights. Um, so, Roman Reigns defeats King Corbin... It's not settling anything as far as wrestling goes. You caught kind of the tail end of it, so what did you think about it? Well, I thought it was interesting. It always seems to me unfair when, um, uh, and I realize fair enough has very little to do with this, when um, other people jump in. Okay. So um, that always seems, you know, kind of a, a setup. Yeah, I, I, these guys have, um, I mean, Roman Reigns just got his... The Usos, which are another um, Samoan tag team, yeah, and I, I, I've been. There's another big Samoan chick there as well, who I think would be great with Roman Reigns if they only would put her together, and I think it would be hilarious. Do they ever do tag teams that are mixed gender? They do, but it's not very common. Oh, um, that'd be fun to see. The most, the most recent, the most high profile one I can remember was during WrestleMania. Of 32 or 33, I want to say 32, John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice, which are, um, um, The Miz is a, has his own TV show on the E! Network. Uh, well, the I Miz. know who The Miz is. Yes. Yeah. I, and I like the show. I think it's a nice toy at what their lives theoretically might be, even though it's not really their lives at all, I would believe. I've seen the ads for it. I've never seen that show, but I've seen the ads for it. You're not, it looks like fun. It, it looks, looks like it fun. looks it looks very tongue in cheek. It is very tongue in cheek. It's it's it, and what's funny here is the Miz is a former reality TV show star to begin with. That's how he got okay. into pro wrestling, and now okay. he's kind of doubled back and gone full circle. It, it reminds me a lot of the the old Nick Lachey and and Jessica Simpson. Yes, yes, yes. That's very yeah, a very. If you really want to go back in time, like old Oz Osborne or the Osborne family, almost okay. Yeah, but it's very tongue in cheek. They have a new daughter. They have a baby daughter. They're gonna they get a new one here shortly as well. If they have, Maurice hasn't already give, given birth already, but but anyways, it's a, it's a fun little show if you get a chance to watch it. It doesn't really go into a lot of WWE related stuff all the time, so it's very acceptable for people who are not in the know already. Um, so I, I thought the match was perfectly fine. I didn't really care too much for it because I don't care for these two. I, I like. Baron Corbin, I want him to do something more substantial than fighting with Roman Reigns because I don't like Roman Reigns. Okay. Because Fair enough. Um, for me, Roman Reigns is being pushed too hard as a babyface. Kind of being forced on you. Yeah, and and I don't care for that at the end of the day. My favorite, my absolute favorite time was when he when he beat the Undertaker the next night on Raw because the crowd who goes to the next night at Raw yeah. is very very internet savvy hardcore fr fans yeah. who don't like Roman Reigns literally for 10 plus minutes Roman Reigns just comes out to the ring there even before he comes out to the ring they are cheering all sorts of different stuff in unison you know remember how when we were in the Odyssey where everyone was going like woo and then you heard other times when people were doing their bits everyone yeah. followed along imagine a big stadium like, like imagine a big arena like we were in and everyone is booing, cursing, go away. 
you know, like, you know, thank you, Undertaker. And the, this guy, Roman Reigns, they just screamed and yelled at him. You can't believe it on live TV because it's the audience. Roman Reigns never said a damn thing. Every single time he'd go to bring the mic up to his mouth, they'd boo him even harder and continue yelling and screaming expletives at him the entire time. Wow. It was the pr- And again, for like 15 minutes, this went on. Didn't do a damn thing. And then when he finally put the mic through his mouth, he said, this is my yard now. Dropped it and then walked back up the walked back up to the ring, and to the to the entrance. It was the perfect opportunity to turn him into a bad guy, and they never pulled the trigger. I would I would I would have done everything in my power to just make this guy as hated as everyone hates him, and then turn him back into then yeah and, every, and, you, yeah and you He'd hate be him the, be the be the 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 bad guy and the then, one you love to hate yeah and then eventually get to the point where you're like. Okay, yeah, like we all really hate him because he's because he's a great wrestler, but he's a great bad guy, and eventually it turns around to we all like him. Yeah, that's how you, and that's why I think if you have somebody, who, if they're, that's what happened to The Rock. Yeah, The Rock when he first got out there, nobody liked him. He was super smiley and everything, and then he went away for about a month and a half. When he came uh, about two or three months, came back, and he was this other guy. You know, instead of being Rocky Maivia, he was just The Rock. You know, and he. He, you know, he yelled and screamed at everybody. He said, you didn't like me when I was smiling or anything else. Well, I'm going to show you guys now. And everyone, you know, everyone hated him initially. And then eventually everyone just liked him because they loved this character. Yeah. So. Um, the next major match we have is the 30 Women Royal Rumble match. Who knew that there were 30? And Because that's not all that there. So, so what was your estimation of how many female wrestlers there are? Because that was 30 of them. There was 30 of them being pulled from both SmackDown and Raw, which have their own women's divisions, um, also including the NXT, which is a third, technically it's supposed to be their developmental brand, but it's just a brand now as well, so it's like a third show. You didn't see a quality difference, I thought, between... Nope. Yeah. No, a lot of the NXT wrestlers, um, I mean, are the, you have Charlotte, Sasha, Becky, Bailey, all came out of NXT... Right. Oscar came out of NXT. Kyrie Sane. A lot of names that are on this list here: um, Sonya Deville, Dana Brooke, Tamina. Uh, I mean, all these people came out of NXT originally. Well, and what's interesting is is um, so you had you had this this match with thirty women, and then there was another match later on that still pulled a couple of women who weren't in that match. Um, yes. Yeah, so the roster is deep. And in this case, you also had um, some additional people. You had Mighty Molly, or uh, Molly Holly, who's a, a wrestler back from the early 2000s, and same with... Uh, she was kind of fun to watch. Yes. And yeah. then you also had Kelly Kelly, who, um, not well known for being a wrestler, but she is a, she is a wrestler from back in the, from the, the, the aughts here, the, uh, going, the late 2000s going into the 2010s. Um, but you had like, a very nice deep roster of people here. Um, my only thing I, that, you know, I, I wished uh, Alexa Bliss would have wanted because I love Alexa, Alexa Bliss and I, I haven't seen her really doing a whole lot in, in wrestling after she lost the titles at WrestleMania 33, 34. I haven't seen her doing a whole lot between then and I wish she'd do more, she had more opportunities to do more stuff because uh, she makes a great villain. Well, okay, so so let's try. So you have this format in which you have you start out with two wrestlers, and mm-hmm. and then it, the the audience counts down like the last ten seconds. Yeah, they're never in sync, though. I always find that to be the funny part. <laughs> oh, well, they're a never lot of in sync. So you get the nine, eight, seven, six, um, as they count down the next person coming in, mm-hmm. and and for some of the sometimes the person just runs at the stage and hops in. Other times there's a full on. Entrance, entrance sort of thing yeah and other times people just kind of saunter down to the ring there's like just go on and take my time stretch out a little bit take off my robe coat jacket my umbrella face mask you which know, seemed to galoshes. be and because the because the cameras focused on them it seemed to seemed to be at a time when there wasn't much happening in the ring and everybody else was just sort of taking a well-needed rest intentionally yeah so um, uh, that's what it, what it came across. So the, the the format naturally favors whoever comes in towards the end. Although the person who won was in at fifteen or sixteen. Uh, Charlotte, who won this match, was at number seventeen. Seventeen, okay. So right in the middle, she was in the match for about twenty-seven minutes. Um, the person who was in the match for the longest, though, she was in for thirty some odd. Yeah, we had uh, Bianca 
Bianca Belair, who was an NXT, mm-hmm. who was a part of NXT, she was in there for 33 minutes, eventually got eliminated and by she, Charlotte. And, and she tossed the, the largest number of people, I think, too. Uh, she eliminated eight people during the, during the day as Did well. Did anybody else eliminate more? Uh, Sasha Baszler, who was also in NXT, also eliminated eight people as well. So, so I mean, it's, uh, it's interesting to see. First of all, you had you had the glow. Um, you had Naomi. The, yeah, that is like the best outfit ever. It really was. It, the it was, shoes change colors. They're lit. They, the soles of the shoes. When she was when she was yeah, so the shoes have LEDs in them that change color. I think between like a green, red, and blue sort of thing. When she was the WWE SmackDown Women's Champion, and that's in the sole of the shoe, by it, the way, that's not that's not the top of the shoe. That's in, in the, the in the sole of the shoe. Yeah. When she was the WWE uh, SmackDown Women's Champion, they made a custom specialized belt that had LEDs in it, so they all kind of glowed. Her big <laughs> thing beforehand is that when she would come out, her entire outfit was um, they would put blue lights on her. Yeah. And she would always have like this neon reflective stuff in her hair or on her or her outfit would be reflective of the blue light. So she would be dancing in the light and you wouldn't see her initially. And then the lights kind of shine on her and then you would actually just see her. Yeah. So that was entirely her initial sort of uh, bit at the end of the, whenever she would come into the ring. Uh, she's been off television for a while because the Usos were off television and she's married to one of the Usos. Okay. Um, but again, she, when she was champion, she had a belt that glowed and light up as well. Which I think is kind of fun and cute. Well, yeah. So this it, it, that really was fun. So to to show you the lengths to which some some of the ladies, um, and this is true of the men's as well, um, because you're not eliminated until you've gone over, mm-hmm. and both feet have hit the floor. So there were um, people. The glow, especially, managed to somehow get over, but not land on the ground she actually went over and landed on the barricades that surround the ring there's like a three to four foot sort of like probably about as big as this table almost maybe a little bit bigger um, maybe four or five feet across uh, a barricade that separates the audience from the ring at that point and usually that that no man's land sort of area is where you're expected to land in but she was able to she got pushed off and was able to grab onto the barricade literally just like hairs away from the ground had her swing swing herself over mm-hmm. and then walk on top of where the reporters were reporting where the announcers were at and create a ramp to mm-hmm. the staircase and get back into and the and get ring. back into the ring without ever touching the floor now that's usually Kofi's been at the end of the day Kofi for the last few years has found ways to um basically either have just like one foot land into the ground or be caught by somebody else or do a handstand along the, well, somebody, on the ground. Okay, somebody else did get caught by, by somebody who was interested in dating them. Yes, I believe that was Mandy Rose, um, who was caught by Otis of the... Um, of the elevators? No, no. He's, 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 <laughs> Sorry. He's from a tag team called Heavy Machinery. They're both very big guys. Um, Otis, who has been kind of... Um, not hitting on, but kind of like macking on uh, Mandy Rose, and Mandy Rose has finally sort of like turned the tables. Where before she was like, uh, "No," now she's kind of like, "Okay, well, you're kind of cool and sweet." Yeah. So um, he somehow just la- was underneath her when she fell out and caught her, so she never had to fall on the ground. Yeah, um, happened a second time where actually he caught uh, both Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, who's uh, Mandy Rose's tag team partner, and then eventually got like tipped over at some point. Yeah, and both of them got disqualified after that. Um, but again, I mean, like, I think this would have been a great time to have um, Sh- Shayna Baszler, who is a former um, UFC fighter in the same kind of you know, uh, like a Ronda Rousey. Like a Ronda Rousey, I would thought. I would think that because she doesn't have the, she used to have the women's NXT Women's Championship on her. Now she doesn't have that on her anymore. So I thought it would have been a great chance to for her to win the Rumble, and especially to if she eliminated Charlotte. Flair to really kind of make a point of saying like I like Charlotte Flair though. I do I do love Charlotte so much she's such a bitch I mean such a great wrestler yeah and she's she's Ric Flair's daughter she 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 leans into it hard sometimes but like I love how she's like six foot three you know or something and she towers over all the rest of the women and well, she's, she's got that sort of sort of classy, classy tacky thing going she's got that She's got this very classy sort of look to her at the same time, but at the same time, you know it's that... tacky classy. Real tacky classy? Yeah. 
No, I, I always got this air of it like... Like like Queen at the Trailer Park. Okay, I, I can see that. I would think I would think you know like Duchess of you know Rhode Island or something, but okay, okay, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, I, I see. You clearly I, haven't been to Rhode Island, but that's okay. No, that's okay. I have not. Um, so yeah, so Charlotte ends up winning. We don't. I'm. We're fairly certain she's going to challenge Becky at the end of the day. I don't think she's going to challenge Bailey on SmackDown because w- the Raw women's side doesn't have as nearly as many uh, women on it at this point here, and I think that. Um, there's a great opportunity to for Becky and Charlotte to fight each other again because they've fought each other on numerous occasions and to uh, relive that rivalry or find a way to uh, continue it. Becky, by the way, champion since WrestleMania, one of the longest reigning women's champions in a long time here at this I point. I have the t-shirt. <laughs> well, okay, so so let's back up here a little bit and, and I, I, the questions I have. Okay. Okay. See, so, so you've obviously brought this whole huge poll of performers mm-hmm. for this event. It's, best I can figure, you had at least seventy, maybe a couple more. Probably about that many, yeah. Because you had thirty men, thirty women, and then you had a couple of I'd other. Actually, I'd actually wager probably more on the lines of about eighty to ninety. Okay. So I mean, so you had because you had warm up right before you had you had some pre matches okay. and you had which some I, wrestlers which, who which I didn't see and okay. you had some other wrestlers who weren't in the match that were there as well like the Usos um, you also had uh, Seth Rollins had his little crew when he came out as well um, so yeah I would say there's probably about maybe eighty five to ninety wrestlers so there. a whole lot of people um, and and what impressed me is that okay so that's got to be expensive mm-hmm. um, to do. That's a, a whole lot of people. And some of those people were in and out of that ring within 60 seconds. Which really sucks for them. But they get paid for being there, not for how long they last in it. Okay, but but so I guess my question is, that's an awfully expensive thing to produce. I mean, I mean, if, if it hadn't been for the Royal Rum, the two Royal Rumbles, mm-hmm. how, how many people would you normally bring to something like that? 30, 40, maybe? Um, well, depending on the pay-per-views the in a yeah. lot of cases. like So if you, when we have like the SmackDown or Raw pay-per-views, you know, you might only have 20 wrestlers at the end of the day who actually wrestle, or maybe 25, 30 at most if you assume tag teams. Okay. So so I guess my, my question is is the economics of it. Because, you, okay, so you're making money off the pay-per-view, and, you, and certainly it was in a baseball park, and, and, it, and the stands looked... You know, pretty pretty filled. All the lower stands were full. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were using the upper stands, but it wouldn't make sense that they would because it'd be such a distance away. Well, the I've been in the, um, so the one in San Antonio. I got to go to the uh-huh. WrestleMania in that. Um, I wasn't in the really high seats, but I know people were up there. There were people. Okay. So it, it's not uncommon. They want to fill every seat they physically can. Um, and so they will usually have big monitors up above or on the, so we're, the we're, railings. Okay, so when they come to San Jose, we're 65 a ticket for... Um, we're about mid, mid-range level. Yeah, mid-range level. Okay, so um, you figure some people on the floor are paying, people on the floor are paying more, I assume? Um, people on the floor are probably playing anywhere from about uh, 150 to maybe $500 the closer you are to the ring. Okay. And in some cases, especially if you're um, where the hard camera is, because we're going to be facing, we're facing the same way the hard camera is facing. So okay. in most cases, if they're going to be speaking to the crowd, they'll be almost looking at us in a lot of cases. Oh, that'll be fun. Because last time we were on the other side. Last time we were on the other side, where we would have been be where we would have been in the shot had they panned out pro- yeah. properly. So those seats that are kind of like just right behind the ring where you can see the, um, where you can be seen in a lot of cases, usually go for a lot more money too. Okay. So it's all dependent on kind of the location and the demand for the tickets, obviously. I'm just trying to figure out, okay, so so are you, are you saying we have like 10,000 people there? Um, we can actually, we actually know the actual number for how many were in attendance. Uh, 42,715 people in this venue. That's how many were actually seated? 42,000? 42, 42,715. That was how many tickets were sold. Or that's how many tickets they have. Doesn't necessarily include how many tickets are comp tickets or what the tickets sold for in some cases. Well, let's, let's just say say three fourths of that were were sold, and you sold thirty thousand tickets. Okay, so maybe the economics do work because I'm trying to think of of how how you pay people enough 
to make it worth them coming so they can run into the ring and be in it for 60 seconds and be popped right back out. Well, again, if you assume that there's this, the base ticket price, let's say, say $50, that's already like $2 million there at least. Okay. And that's before you have to pay the the um, arena for being there just to begin right. with. Right. But I think a lot of that gets kind of merged in with their own ticket, with their own sales and concessions and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not so. sure what the... How, I just... It seemed like a lot of performers in a, <coughs> in a single place because at the very minimum you had 70. Mm -hmm. You're probably right. It's probably somewhere between 80 and 90. And, and that's a whole lot of people... Especially when some of those people were that we did a job for all of a minute. Yeah. So I mean, like, I'm wondering, like, you know, would it be better to have a Royal Rumble with 15, which is still a lot of wrestlers, mm -hmm. and have them come in every two minutes? I don't know. I mean, the minimum the minimum length of time it takes to get these 30 people in is 45 minutes. At minimum, yeah. Because they come in every 90 seconds, and then there's and then they, it doesn't just like end when the last person comes in. There's at least another 15, 20 minutes of... Sometimes these Royal Rumble matches last for an, an hour. hour into 20 minutes. Uh, there's yeah. been Now, mind you, keep in mind, there's been larger Rumbles before. There's been a 40-man Royal Rumble in some years. Oh, that's nuts. And in um, Saudi Arabia, they had the greatest Royal Rumble. They had 50 people come in. Wow. Uh, men only, unfortunately. Um, well, it's Saudi Arabia. There, so, like, WWE is in a weird sort of limbo sort of thing where everybody is a free, technically known as a free agent. They have a, they're contractually, they're contractually free agents, but they're not allowed to go, go perform anywhere else. The WWE pays you kind of like an annual salary, more or less. Um, and you get bonuses for being on pay-per-views or other major events. But you're usually expected to do radio shows and... TV. You know, if you get to do a TV commercial, it's with the blessing of the WWE. Yeah, because they're controlling um, their brand. And but you you get paid for that on occasion. So, um, and obviously to use you costs money, which the company gets more of versus what you would get. Um, so I mean, wrestlers. I mean, at the end of the day, get paid an awful lot, but a lot of that money for themselves goes back into their own travel expenses, their own, their own, their own lives. costumes, their own. Yeah. Cause they do. I mean, despite the fact that they have like really cool costumes, all those women paid for their own costumes, yeah. which are probably not cheap to make when you consider that they have to be a certain quality and they have to be, you know, they have to last being bumped into somebody. You can't have rhinestones and, and sequins just falling off randomly. Yeah. Um, you know, like you even mentioned how like Becky's, you know, got these fish tights going on and they're like ripping and they were, ripped and broken by the time she was done she'll never get to use those ever again well fish nets are, are cheap though yeah so, i mean so, so that's within, not within reason i mean like that's not yeah that's not a big expense i'm sure she just buys it by like the 20 pack or something well, i'm just saying I, it, it i was just i was trying to think through the economics of this mm -hmm. and um i found it interesting because that there's just a whole lot of people to to pay i guess Mm -hmm. Is what I'm trying to say. Well, I think I think a lot of the money gets made back on the concessions because they do do a lot of business on those days. As far as uh, we even saw an ad for like the shop WWE. Yeah. But again, I mean, keep in mind that there's people who are sell who travel along with the WWE that only sell T-shirts, wrestling belts, all this other stuff that, in a lot of cases, people are very much impulse buys for people who don't really realize that you could or couldn't buy it while you're there. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of situations as well where, um, again, like a lot of these wrestlers you've kind of already paid, you're just kind of paying them a bit of a bonus here at this point. There's also, uh, while you can include like the 42,000 people there in the arena, there's also a couple million people subscribed to the WWE Network, which at $8 a month um, is where a lot of these people, where they're getting a lot of their revenue yeah. from, which would used to be pay-per-view buy-ins, which is not really a thing anymore. I mean, I don't know how many people buy pay-per-views anymore. Well, okay, so how were we watching? You so, have a membership. So I have a me so I have access so I have a membership to the WWE network. Mm -hmm. Um because again, like I said, you support the stuff that you want to see more of and if you yeah. don't pay to see that, if you don't pay yeah. to to do it, then you don't really get, you know, then you can't be upset when it goes away. Right. Um which is, you know, we had we had you had that conversation regarding Patreon. Uh, Patreon, I've also, I mean, same thing with anime. I think again, if you if you like something, you pay for it and yeah. you support it as much as you can. 
you know, you don't have to support everything you have for it, but you have to support it in some way, shape, or form. Otherwise, yep. you can't complain when it goes away, and it won't go away if people are still paying into it. Yeah. You know, if you still pay, it pays for something, it, there's no reason for it not to go to be there at the end of the day. Yep. Um, but no, again, yeah, no. It, it, I'd be interested to see it from an accounting standpoint because you got to keep in mind that they also have to put up all this rigging and everything for all the lights and all, all the, the staging. Screens. There's, oh, I mean, I mean. If you think about it, um, there's roadies involved. There's all sorts of things Producers, involved. Producers, a and, lot and, of technical and we people. Saw, yeah, and we saw um, when we were there, um, this you know the changing of the of the of the um, ring ring in, ex- in the aprons a couple times. Yeah, and um, and all of that. So I mean, there's there's some real. There's a lot of people there. You, yeah, you'd be surprised that it's not just the wrestlers that there's. Also, you, the cameramen as well. Like these are there's well, the cam- lighting people because the lighting people, you know, are actually pretty key. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of uh, video. You've got everything. Yep. Um. So not an inexpensive thing to put on. And I was just trying to think of how expensive it is it to put on a Royal Rumble because then you've got all those people, mm-hmm. all those people. And keep in mind as well, in years past, um, less so as we've gotten more into the two thousands, they would make a new entrance way or new entrance stage every single pay-per-view wow. so you'd have like you might reuse stuff from other sets that you've had in the past or you might reuse Re- reconfigure it yeah reconfigure it like the one they had here was a modified house show version of it so like usually with the house they just have like the two panels like the yeah. four panels and then you kind of walk through the middle one yeah almost in this case it's a modified version of that yeah um but no, again, I'd be cool. I'd be interested to see what the economics of it is as well i think that'd be kind of fascinating as well yeah i would yeah so it, it, that just struck me so let's move on with the matches here. The next one we had, we had uh, Bailey versus Lacey Evans. I like Lacey Evans. I like the the gloves and the hat and the kind of, the handbag it's a, and the. It's a Southern Belle almost, but yeah, not quite there. And then, but and then we have hometown Bailey, who's from our hometown of San Jose. So surprised that she turned. I saw it coming for a while. I mean, like she it, was really wholesome when we saw her. Yeah, when she was, she's got. Her ponytail to the side, and she's yeah. her her finishing move is a hug, and when she hugs you and then drops you to the ground, and she leans back and tosses you a little bit. Yeah, like I, I always found that kind of a fun little move. Um, but now she's a ba- now she's a heel. She's a bad guy. She looks very yeah. much like she's black. Well, if you're gonna be a bad guy, you have to wear black. You can't. Yeah. Wear, the only time you get to wear white is if you think you're the good guy. And she, Bailey kind of admits she knows she's not the good guy right now. Well, she could be in color though. She. Didn't I know. Even the hair. I, I wish. Yeah. But she always had black hair, so. Well, yeah, but it wasn't quite as dark. She had kind of like a black eyeliner as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was a very gothy look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Bailey ended up winning this match here. Part of the elements of this match was that Lacey Evans um, has this thing where she calls people who are uncultured, she calls them nasties. Yeah. Um, in, in this particular match here, though, one of the key elements of it was here was that um, Bailey made a point of saying that Lacey Evans is a bad mom, which is why you kept seeing her daughter in the crowd that was dressed up very similar to her mom. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I wish that Lacey Evans had won. I don't like Lacey Evans because I feel as, 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 especially when we watched her those, the when we watched when her back alive, in yeah. the summer. Yeah. Um, that she was, I felt like she was being shoved down our throats. Um, as far as from a wrestling fan point, fan yeah. point, but I think that if you're going to have the opportunity with, usually there's a stipulation that if your parents are in the crowd, you typically don't win. It's it's a it's kind of an it's kind of like it's an a, unspoken rule. It's kind of a kiss of death moment. Huh. So because it's because I mean, or somehow the parents get involved or the family members get involved. It's very, it's not typical for wrestlers to win when their families are there. It's somewhat uncommon. Well, it's, and, it's, and to me, it seemed kind of rude because at one point Bailey was gesturing to the daughter, and yeah, which was and, all intentional. But I, I never saw the daughter would not have a smile on her face. I think the entire time. Well, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, you she, know, she, she, she being held by her father, and I'm sure her father's telling her, "It's this it's is okay, all. it's all right. This is all just for fun." Yeah. Um, no, I absolutely agree there. Um, no, but again, I think Lacey, as much as I don't like her, would be an interesting champion to hate because she's got that southern. She's got that kick me face on her. Yeah. She's got that face that says, don't you really just want to put me in my place? Well, I, I think that part of that's the role she plays because you've got that 
that southern girl and and that's sort of a role that everybody loves to hate anyway uh, precisely no and again that's you why know, i think she has that perfect sort of you know punch me face at the end of the but, day i mean i mean the interesting thing about her is i think she i think she's able to pull it off and not everybody would be no i, I think she pulls yeah. it off really well and she's clearly a she's clearly a good wrestler at the end of the day she's clearly got that she's got she's got kind of like a uh like a renter's version of uh, Charlotte at the end of the day like yeah. you know like a like a like a B-level version of Charlotte but I think at the end of the day she could be interesting on her own level um, as a heel at the end of the day I think you, because you have Charlotte that she'll always be kind of a mid-carter at the end of the day which is somewhat unfortunate but um, I really wish that they'd do something with uh, with more with Lacey at this point here um, and I'd love to see her just be the bad guy for a while and have the championship in order to lord it over everybody else. Because, again, there's nothing better than a person who thinks they're doing the right thing. Well, who did we see her wrestle against when we saw her? Becky. That's right. We saw her with Becky and then also with Bailey at one point, too, in San Jose. Yeah. Because, again, even though Bailey was on SmackDown at the time, your hometown, you come and do that. You know, plus yeah. 19, 2019 was weird with a lot of wrestlers going on either side constantly wasn't very consistent who was supposed to be where. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, but that's okay. Um, no, I'm not complaining about that. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was an interesting contrast because they obviously um, have very different styles altogether. Mm -hmm. Bailey's very physical and, um, and uh, Charlotte's more. Overwhelming. Well, she, Charlotte seems like Charlotte's a Charlotte can Charlotte's a lot more physical in the sense that she's bigger and stronger than a lot of her opponents, um, and she seems more athletic, more like a natural athletic sort of thing. Bailey seems more like a scrapper now at the end of the at this point but here. But Bailey, she's, you can tell she used to be a gymnast. Yeah, Bailey, you can tell she used to have she used to have some training. Yeah, um, in some sort of gymnast, which is you know not a which bad, I think is true of a lot of them actually. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of people are on the men's side. A lot of them are former football players, wrestlers, that sort of case. For women's side, a lot of it is gymnastics in a lot of cases. So, I mean, it, that leads well for being flipping and moving yeah. around, being comfortable with, you know, being in the air. Yeah. You know, and also falling Makes down. Sense. I would imagine that, you know, not being afraid to fall down. Yeah. So now we get to the next match, which is probably your least favorite match of the entire night. This was uh, Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Yeah. In a strap match which is you know the, so the best way i can describe a strap match is there's a 13 foot strap leather strap that's tied to each wrestler's left hand um the intent of the strap is that nobody can run away from the other person at the end of the day and i guess i guess the fiend's thing was that he would disappear in the middle of a through the floor in the middle of a in the middle of a match, match yeah like he's no well known for disappearing and then reappearing elsewhere through the clever use of House show lights disappearing. It's a very time honored. It's a very time honored tradition. Time honored thing. Well, so so I guess that would happen, and so the thing was to have the strap match. I found it masochistic. I found it very, very, I, I very it, violent. Unfortunately, and I found it hard to watch because you actually, you know, where where you know, it's to me, wrestling isn't really violent as much as it's violent it's not really violent there, there's a line that there's yeah. that kind of exists where you have to where you can suspend your disbelief that okay the other guy just punched the other guy but he didn't really punch him it just nobody's like... really getting hurt or not no. getting hurt badly yeah and in this particular instance you actually saw um welts welts I and mean, daniel didn't have a shirt on no, um and, had, and even the fiend had sort of a muscle shirt on and, and, and towards the end you did see welts on him as well mm -hmm. um, but these were real welts I mean they were really being slapped they, with yeah, that they leather they belt and and I don't care whether you're getting paid or not I, I don't want to see somebody being, being brutalized like that, yeah. yeah and and that's what it felt like to me well, so we, we, we it'd be not... interesting to see what other fans reactions were to that a, there's a lot of people who liked it and didn't like it for similar reasons I think a lot of there myself I found the match to be. I found the match difficult because because right now they're trying to produce. They don't have the Undertaker anymore. Or at least they don't have right. the Undertaker as a full time sort of thing. He's really only being carted out for specialty matches. Is that because here. he's getting old? Yes. Okay. 
Um, I just he, wanted to ask. Yeah, no, he, he's he's old. He's had knee surgery and hip surgery already. Um, so he doesn't move around quite the same way he does before. And, you know, he's been wrestling for the better part of... At this point here, if you assume he's still wrestling, he proper, he didn't, he's never actually properly retired at all. Yeah. Um, but he stopped doing full-time wrestling in 2018, 2017. Okay. Um, but he was wrestling all the way back as early as 1982. Wow. So he's been around for 35 years and in a in an industry where not a lot of wrestlers make it to be, you know, 80 or 90 at all. You know, and he's, you know, he's one of the, the characters that just has existed for the longest time. Yeah, I, I mean, it, to me, it, it's a name that harkens back so, quite a way. Absolutely, and... Um, and right now, because they don't really have The Undertaker as often as you would like to have him for stuff, they're trying to position Bray Wyatt, who they've been trying to position like this way for years now. Well, he's got, you know, so a number of creepy things that really bother me. Yes. I don't like that mask. I no, that mask is, in, that's intentional. Well, his I lantern's, understand that, but... His lantern's not any better. Yeah, but the, the mask is really... Off-putting. It's very... It's... it's, it's Joker esque and and which is intentional. There's an element. So there's a portion in the Joker, uh, in the Batman continuity. There's a point in which, depending on what continuity you're following, the following Batman at, um, the Joker gets redeemed. He finds his sanity again. Uh huh. Harley Quinn or the or so or, or not Harley Quinn, but the daughter of Harley Quinn and the Joker takes you know cuts off the Joker's face to wear it around as the new Joker, and then the original Joker gets his face back, but never actually sews it back into his face properly at all, so it looks like he's wearing a mask that is of his own face. Um, and, I, and I would imagine that's probably where the intention came from for this mask, because it looks like it's like a leather sort of bound thing, but like it's skin leather almost. Yeah. Um... And so it's very, very ugly looking and very disturbing, which again is entirely disturbing intentional. is the correct word. Yes, very disturbing. Well, um, I, and I get that that's intentional, but that doesn't make it. It so, doesn't make it any better. Yeah. So the guy's got the weird, creepy mask. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the real, the real thing that that bothered me was was really how how brutal brutal the match was. Yeah. No. I yeah. I mean, and I can, that was. And I can and I can see where that would turn people off from this particular match because it's. It's not easy watching that on any particular level, and it almost feels wrong to watch it when it's happening. Well, I mean, is there a fan board where people post any any sort of comment? Well, yes, there is. There's a so you've heard of Reddit, right? Yes. So there's a subreddit. So there's a subreddit. Guess what it's called? WrestleMania. It's called the Squared Circle. Oh. Because the ring is known as the Squared Circle. That makes sense. So it's a um, ring, but it's a square. So there's a subreddit for for that match. Um, I haven't actually read the reviews for this at all. I've watched a couple of reviews where people said it was um, a bit gruesome um, of a match, but it's hopefully leading toward Daniel Bryan winning at WrestleMania 36 or somebody dethroning Bray Wyatt of the title at some point, um, which I don't know who, who that's going to be right now. I think Daniel Bryan's the most logical choice for that right now, but we still have literally three months, three and a half, four months until WrestleMania in April, so we'll find out then. Most We'll find out along the way. Um, but I don't know who else they would position to do that at this point in time. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I, guess, I guess my comment would be, um, I don't think I'd be interested in the sport if that's the direction it's going in. If I mean, if that's what the fans it, wanted, and that's, I, that's and not, I, it's not a typical match. It's it's very. This, the last time there was a strap strap match was probably like almost two and a half, three years ago. So it's not a very common match at all. Um, and WWE has actually made a point of when it comes to chairs and other sort of hard, hardcore sort of elements, they're very infrequent. Um, there used to be an entire division called the hardcore division where people would just kill themselves with different various elements from trash cans to, you know, kendo sticks and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's ever since, again, if we go back in time to when, um, actually they stopped doing this around 2003, I want to say they actually killed their hardcore division because it was just not feasible. But, um, ever since the death of Chris Benoit in 2007, um, and the, the 
graduation to the PG level era of content. Um, they've gotten away from chair shots to the head. Um, the use of because, a chair because kids would copy it. Well, not so much that kids would copy it, but you know, like it's it can cause concussions. And they thought, and they're yeah, you know, it's really hard to say what happened to Chris Benoit's head. I mean, there's a lot of people that say that um, it's it was like it was like looking at an Alzheimer's brain. Um, yeah. In some situations. Um, well, and they, and they found that that um, with with there have been a number of football players that have had early deaths that had um, any number of, of concussions or issues yeah, with the head. Yeah. yeah. They now have a very strict concussion policy and um, have done a lot more to try to take care of their wrestlers as they realize that they're more uh, of a commodity and less of a disposable sort of tool at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, also, I think because they realize they're just not getting a lot of wrestlers uh, beforehand. Now, now that's the NXT, they're able to make new wrestlers constantly, so they right. always have a fresh team of wrestlers whenever they kind of want to add and replace people. But I, I think there's a, a more balanced outlook um, as as your generation comes up mm -hmm. that that says, you know, I got to live a long time. It isn't yes. like I'm only going to live until I'm sixty. I've I've really got to look at this as a long term as, investment. Yeah, as I've got forty more years. Do I want to live it hurt? Yes. No. I, and and impaired. And, and I agree. No, absolutely. And I think the rest in the in the wrestling community has been very uh, it's been very accepting and very demanding of these changes that this kind of stuff be done that uh, wrestlers be taken care of more properly going forward. Um, and we're all we we all just, I mean, and we'll get we'll get onto when we get to the men's Royal rumble. This will become yeah. a little bit. Uh, you heard you probably remember me being very upset about certain stuff, but yeah. Um, but no, I, I wrestlers, I, I do think need to take care of themselves. You can have a really difficult match, such as a hell in the cell or a, a chair match or a ladder match yeah. once a year. And that should really be it. You shouldn't be through because that's, those are not easy matches to be falling from. Cause when you, when a normal wrestler falls, they fall from maybe six, seven feet in the air. If they're going to fall that much at all. Yeah. Um, for a ladder match, you might fall up to 10 to 15 feet up in the air. Or you might fall down onto a ladder that's Which meant would, to be a ladder. Yeah, that would not, hurt. And not, yeah. And normally if you go not through a padded a, ladder. No, mind you, if you go through a table, like... They break away. They're, they're meant to break away. They're also kind of good for you because they cushion your fall along the they way. They absorb some of the impact, So yeah. rather if you're falling six feet or seven feet in the air straight down, you're hitting something at three feet and then, then hitting again the ground, yeah. which has yeah. slowed your momentum and actually you know cushioned your yeah. demand momentum in some way shape or form not entirely and a lot of it too if, especially when you look at the tables because they kind of v they split down the middle and toward a v yeah. the more that impact is going to your sides and less on your spine and your back which would probably be more advantageous yeah. for yeah. you so yeah no so the fiend bray wyatt ends up winning um by mandible claw which is a really sick and horrifying move um basically what you do is you get your top two fingers into yeah. the person's mouth okay. and you're pushing at the top of their mouth, mouth at the roof yeah. at the roof of their mouth so it's not um the most ideal thing in the world no it, it yeah yeah th i just i i was really taken aback and and kind of turned off by the amount of how violent that felt and what's worse about that match too is that that was like that was a 17 minute long match too so yeah. it wasn't a short match either. yeah yeah um so moving on to the next one here we have becky lynch versus oscar now this is almost a repeat of <laughs> what the Asuka, name Oscar. Oscar the Green Spray. Which okay, so Oscar is a Japanese wrestler. She held the women's NXT Championship for over six hundred days. When she went into WrestleMania, she well not only so when she was in the first Women's Royal Rumble three years ago, she won it. So she was the first ever Women's Royal Rumble winner, and she went on to WrestleMania. And she had been undefeated at that point going into WrestleMania. She was undefeated anywhere she wrestled at that point through all through WWE. And Charlotte's the one who broke that streak. How dare Charlotte break that streak for Asuka? That was not what should have happened at that point. That that championship should have that 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 spree should have lasted for a while. And you she's a she's a fun character. Oh, she's got so much colorful hair. I love her robes. I love yeah. I love the. Uh, kimono that she wears because she literally drags. She really, she really plays up being Japanese. Yeah, and, she, and uh, I, I love Asuka so much. Royal Rumble last year, it was 
um, Asuka as the SmackDown Women's Champion, mm-hmm. and it was Becky trying to beat Asuka for the championship, which didn't happen. So, uh, which didn't happen at the time. So, this is what they kind of call what they what they call a rubber match. So, um, so you can get your win back. So, yeah. Becky is the champion now, fighting Asuka. Asuka's new deal here is that she's really leaning into the Japanese bit, and they have a thing where they spit out where they spit out a mist at you, and it's mostly just like a green. It's a green kind of like food dye almost that they spit in your face. Well, it, it, yeah, so. it, it's spray. So um, it's supposed to be like blinding on you, but what would it be if somebody spit something in your face yeah. at the end of the day? Yeah. Um, and because it's green, it leaves this great impact of a look at the end of the day. Um, but no, so it was a very physical match between Becky and Asuka, neither one of them having any sort of uh, point in the match where they were clearly leading it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, which is very similar to their match that they had when they were at the Royal Rumble last year. Neither one of them were very dominant throughout the entire match. Um until the very, very end. Um, and at the very end of the day, Becky won. I'm a Becky girl. So what did you think of this match? I thought it was fun. I kept waiting for you, because you know the green thing's going to happen. Yes. You so kept I kept waiting it. for it to happen. Um, and um, and and found, I actually felt like, like by the time it did, I was kind of like, oh, Okay. Because um, it happens at the at the very, very end. end. Yeah. See, I would have been more entertained if it, if it happened toward the very beginning in the, like the first five minutes. Yeah. And then Becky's kind of like blinded for a little bit. And she's kind of like she's got to recover. She's got to recover or find a way to get it out of her eyes. Oscar just has taken her to town for a bit, um, and Becky somehow gets her face clean of the mist, but you still see it all over her at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and you keep going regardless of it. You know, I think that would have made Becky see, see her battle. It would have, I think that would have made Oscar look um, quite a bit inferior after the match, even with the mist and having an honor that she wouldn't have been able to do it. You know, like I think the way it happened here, she ends up she ends up spraying it and it gets on her. Well, she or gets she gets kind of... she gets kind of like drop kick. She gets kicked backwards, and so instead of spraying it in uh, Becky's face, she sprays it upward and kind of onto her at the end yeah. of the day. Um, so it's not it's, so it's not consequential at the end of the day. She tried to use it and it didn't work. Which is very untypical. I, I hope it's the last. I hope it's kind of a way of saying, okay, this is the last time we're ever going to use the mist because it's so, because it's so old fashioned. At the end of the day, it's a nice it's a nice tool to use, but like, if there's been wrestlers that only do this thing and they don't last for long. Yeah, I found it kind of anticlimactic. What I'd really like to do is that her and Kyrie Sane, Oscar, um, are the women's tag team champions. Right. And I'd like to see them have. Uh, I know it's not really feasible and possible and, with such and, a small and, roster of them. And and the other gal was in the the, the Royal Rumble. Rumble. Kyrie Sane was. She's the pirate yeah. princess. Yeah, she's a wicked um, off the top rope arm drop. It's amazing looking. Yeah, well, she was in that ring for how long? The Kyrie Sane. Uh, let's see here. She was in. Okay, she was in there for five minutes. Well, that's not bad. Uh, got eliminated by Alexa Bliss. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, no, again, I, I, I like the match. I, I like the match between Becky and Asuka. I'm hopeful that they start doing more with the women's tag team division because they literally have these championships. They're not branded, so they can go to any brand. Yeah. And I would really hope that they would utilize that to build up wrestlers and tag teams and start a full on women's tag team sort of element here. Um, and they have the perfect opportunity with two really great Japanese wrestlers that are great villains right now. And so I don't see why they don't... And, and the two of them are fun um, because... Um, you... They both kind of got the robes. They're both, you know, going out there together. Um, kind of a sisterhood. Yeah, yeah, very much a sisterhood. I'm, and... waiting, I'm waiting for the all-Japanese stable at this point, though. Well, you know, actually, you could see where that would happen. I mean, I mean is this a good place to talk about um, the fact that there are other nationalities um there are, are broadcasters from all over the Everywhere. world yeah yes. from, yeah um watching this and mm-hmm. and so when we talk about pay-per-view we're not talking just about here here in the US and Canada most likely no we there are spanish announcers there are french announcers German i keep trying to imagine the the spanish announcers going goal 
they're kind of fun to listen to. So the German and the Spanish are usually always at... The Spanish is always next to the ringside announcers, the the uh, English commentary team. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for bigger matches like WrestleMania or, in this case, your Royal Rumble, they'll be the Germans will be there as well. Um, and then a little bit further away, you'll have a you'll have a conjure of other uh, announcers. So you'll have Spanish, Spanish, French, German. Uh, you have Hindi, Mandarin, Japanese. Um, a couple, and there's uh, there's probably another handful of them that are and they're and they're very hammy too. Because at one point you heard the the French as as Glow was going over, and um, going ooh la la. Yeah, you know, and so that way I found that they, they were <laughs> they were participating wholeheartedly in the. Oh, in the uh, I, I think you have to be as hammy as possible in the, the in the campiness of the mm-hmm. whole thing. Oh, absolutely. Which which I I, I appreciate it. I, I I appreciate that it's not a one to one common. It's not a one to one copy of what the English people are doing. Yeah. So I mean, if you speak multiple languages, it might be interesting to watch watch it twice just to see what the French people were saying and doing. Actually, that would be fun. Mm-hmm. I wonder how I'd go about doing that. Huh. Okay. I gave you ideas. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So we get to uh the, we get to the next match here, which is the men's Royal Rumble. Wow. My least favorite match of the night. Well, yeah. Okay. So. You, but I have but I have my own issues with the you, match. You you were you were bitching and money. but but I I actually. A lot a lot of people really enjoyed the men's Royal Rumble this year. I. I think my favorite was from three years ago when Shinsuke Nakamura won it because you had, um, who he was one of my favorite Japanese wrestlers, um, but he there. I mean, this one was just kind of odd to me because it felt like two different matches entirely. I okay, I can see that. So um, to start the match off, we have Brock Lesnar, who is the who is the WWE champion. By the way, who wants to be first? <laughs> Not, Jeez, not Elias. Me. Huh? Not well. Elias was the first guy. Was the second guy out there. Um, Elias is a. How do I put this? Um, at one point there was a wrestler who was a Elvis impersonator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tried to envision that. I, I just I can't <laughs> remember his name off the top of my head. There was a, there was a guy who was an Elvis impersonator at one point. This guy is trying to be like a. Hold play or some sort of in a similar vein, like a Chris Martin. Uh... Well, he's coming out with a he's coming out with a guitar. And he always sings. It's his deal. It's his gig. It's his character. And the guitar goes into the ring with him, and then gets. Smashed. Sometimes it does. Sometimes he goes back out, and sometimes he gets used as a weapon. Because <coughs> it was interesting. We saw the guitar smashed. Oh yes, and I don't think that was a gimmick to guitar either. It was interesting. So. Um, so Elias is playing his way down. Now, mind you, we're in a we're in a baseball stadium that also probably gets used for uh, football. Uh-huh. It's a long entrance ramp. It's a long entrance ramp, yeah. So Elias plays his way down. He says something about Brock Lesnar, and Brock Lesnar just goes after him and chases him. Yeah. So um, the story of Brock Lesnar here is basically the man that would be basically just tossing people out every like minute or so. Well, and and like, okay, so so where where the women, you had a lot of NXT performers and and I, um, other people brought in that you might not be used to to seeing, and I felt like I didn't see the the quality of performer level off when it was when it was other brands. Mm-hmm. With the men, I felt like it did. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, none of the men really got to... I mean, for the first... A lot like, of them were just in and out in, like, no time flat. Yeah, for the first 25, 26 minutes here while Brock Lesnar's in there, all these wrestlers get just tossed out. I mean, like, we have Elias in there for a minute. Eric Rowan in there for eight seconds. You got yeah. Robert Roode, 41 seconds. John Morrison, eight seconds. It's not until you get to Kofi Kingston, who lasts, like, five minutes, and or at least lasts enough time for other wrestlers to get there. So you get Rey Mysterio and Big E to finally get down there. Both the guys are both those guys are eliminated within two to three minutes, two minutes uh, for Rey Mysterio and less than a minute for Big E. Cesaro comes in as well at eighteen seconds. Shelton Benjamin was a fun one because he is a former um, former alumni, also from Michigan State, where Brock Lesnar they yeah. had a hug out oh, and they're like they, and they looked like best friends, and then he threw him out anyway. Yeah, that's not uncommon. That another wrestler did that a little bit later on. Um, 
So Shinsuke Nakamura, also 20 seconds. Um, MVP, Montel, uh, Vonta, Vonta, Montel, Vontanius, Porter, MVP, also 24 seconds. Keith Lee lasted 3 minutes and 32 seconds. He's a, he was the big guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, and I mean, like, like, nobody was in there for very long. You got Braun Strowman who came in as well to try to help. The two of them look like they might actually do it. They might actually get Brock Lesnar out of oh, the ring. Yeah. They got they, awfully they were, darn they, close. Yeah, they were working it, working it almost tag team two on one. And then Brock Lesnar eliminates both of them at once. Yeah. And there's not, there's literally moments here where like he knocks a person out, and you were waiting for the next for, entrance to come in. We're just kind of he's there by himself. He's just there with Paul Heyman in the corner. He takes the belt and he kind of like. He gets the championship and he's just kind of yeah. like walking around and he's like, look okay. what I got. And, 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 and Paul Haven. Paul Haven. I love Paul Haven so much. The perfect re- the perfect New York lawyer that you wanted on your side. He's such a smart ass and he's so amazing. It, it, it is. It's a little over the top though. Oh, it's, it's perfect. If you, if you ever watch him in an interview, he's, he, he's well, no well, different. We, no, we saw him. We saw him when we, when we went. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. He was there. Oh no, but, but in, but in like, but in just behind the scenes sort of interviews with like radio shows or stuff like that or specials or stuff like that no he's very much the same way he's still the same person Interesting. so um he used to run uh another brand called ecw i wish the wwe was actually sponsoring for a while because they were actually getting wrestlers from ecw at one point okay um and they eventually brought him up to the main brand and were having him as a creative uh tal- as a creative writer at one point for their shows okay um, and then he found Brock Lesnar, and he was like, you know, let me see if I can work with Brock Lesnar. I think I might be able to do something with him. And they were like, oh, all right, fine, sure. Because they wanted to make Brock Lesnar the Russian guy. Russian guy. Yeah, okay. they wanted him to talk with a Russian accent and stand up at the ring and laugh at people. And and Paul Heyman was basically was like, no. No. Listen, no, no, we can, do, we can do something better with him. And they asked... And they eventually figured out that Brock Lesnar is not a idiot. He was like, "Who do you want to? Who do you want to wrestle with? I want to wrestle with the smallest wrestlers." He's like, "Why is that? Because I'm going to look like a big bad guy as I toss him around the ring and make myself look like I'm a damn monster," which is what he did, and that's where that's rightfully what happened. So the way we end up getting uh, Mr. Brock Lesnar out of the match here finally is by. Um, we get a wrestler named uh, Ricochet who, who gets into the ring and lasts for a little bit. And then we get Drew McIntyre, who is another pretty tall, beefy guy. But McIntyre comes in at like 20? Comes in at number 16. Oh, he was he at 16. So, so, so... Uh... So Brock Lesnar basically eliminates 13 people out of the match here. Probably the most of any... I think he's tied with one other wrestler for the most eliminations in a single map, in a single Royal Rumble. But the, for even of itself, it's a lot of people to eliminate yeah. in really quick succession, too. Um, Ricochet ends up, because um, the Royal Rumble is a non-disqualification match, ends up uh, hitting Braun Strowman in, in the nether regions, um, which is enough for Drew McIntyre to kick him over the rope and kick him out. Yeah. Um, and then from here, again, it's a completely different match. We get uh, what I would consider a proper Royal Rumble at this point here, where like we're having people... People get, are last. People are lasting. And... Yeah, we have more people in the ring now. And at this point here, like, you can... I'm referencing the Wikipedia article for this because it's got all the times in which they're here and all the brands that they're on. Yeah, which amazes me. Oh, I love Wikipedias. Yeah. I love Wiki so much. If you ever want to be a fan I, okay, of Okay, that's another one. I give them money, by the way. I give Wikipedia money too. Again, I mean, if you like something, you, you yeah, help them out when they need it. it. Yeah. Um, and so now we finally get like the Miz, AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler. Um, here's the one that was the most interesting addition to to this event, and I actually got the chance to I re- I replayed it when it happened. Um, so entrance number twenty one is Edge. Yes. The crowd, like you could hear when the music starts because the music starts it starts with. You think you know me, and then it gives this big guitar riff. The second that the, the second it stops saying "Do you know me," the crowd oh people just, went crazy. The crowd just erupts as yeah. if like as if like because they don't you don't know it's not announced the order you, in which they're no, coming you out. Don't know who when when people are coming out. So or, people are counting down in anticipation, and they don't know who's coming back. Now there had been rumors that he might come back, but it wasn't well known at this point whether he would or wouldn't at all. So that was the. Uh, the key here at the end of the day that 
you know, that would he come back, would he come back. Yeah. Now, to speak about Edge is to realize that he had to retire in 2012 or 2011, Curtis, excuse me, because yeah. of a because of a neck injury. He yeah. had had problems with his neck before on certain occasions. Um, it was after he literally finished WrestleMania and won as champion for WrestleMania, which is not common. It used to be back yeah. in the day that if you were the champion going into WrestleMania, you often lost. Um, nowadays, if you're the champion, you might have a chance of coming out as the champion. Still, he came out champion. His last match that he had. For the WWD, WWE up until this point was he retired as champion, which never happens. That's pretty cool. Um, there's there's an unwritten rule in wrestling that you always that you, you have to give the next person a shot. Yeah, well you ha- you always go out on your back. So whatever yeah. you know, you let a person beat you in order to take all your credit, all the credibility you had to the next guy. Yeah. So you always lose. You always you always disappear by losing. Um, but he won his last match. You know, was at WrestleMania the very next night. Doc, the very next day, doctors told him, you can't wrestle anymore. If you do, you might be paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah. And he retired that very sick, the very same night. And then I guess over the, the the course of these last nine years, he's 46 years old, by the way, too. Oh, wow. So um, you can start to see a little bit of the gray in his beard a little yeah. bit. So, um, But over the course of these last nine years, he's not been doing any heavy impact. He's been doing a lot of acting as well. Uh, but I guess he had his surgery here a year and a half to two years ago and got cleared to wrestle again. Okay. Um, so he comes back and is just an amazing pop in there. Yeah. Um, we that get was a, fun. We get a couple other wrestlers that come in. We get Randy Orton eventually. They had Edge and Randy Orton had a tag team for a while. Yeah. Rated RKO. Um, I think Edge is one of like the last people. He was uh, number three at the end of the day. He actually eliminates... Randy Orton, because the two of them were working together at one point for a yeah. while, and you've got you got this look where Randy Orton is just like, Randy Orton is one of my favorite wrestlers because he looks like because he's this, he looks like he's gonna kill you. You don't know whether he's gonna give you an RKO and get you out of nowhere or not. He's so slimy, and, and even Red Edge like sees him at one point, and Randy Orton is just like, eh, come on, it's my thing. Like, Randy Orton just got that look. He's like, he's gonna he's gonna do it. He's gonna he's crouching, and then Edge turns around and sees him, and Randy Orton is like. Uh, come on, it's me. Yeah, I have to. I don't have a choice. Come on, you know how this works. Yeah. Um, eventually, the end of the match has Seth Rollins coming out. We already have Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, Aleister Black. They're in the ring as well as Roman Reigns. <laughs> I know. Watch, watch me, watch me, watch me, Cowles. Roman Reigns has been the number two guy for the last four or five years in the in the Royal Rumble. Always like the last person eliminated, which is great. I don't want him ever winning this thing. Never. Well, you're probably not the only one who feels that way, which is probably why he's always the second guy. Yeah, because you keep everybody's you keep well, you get, everybody's attention. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Seth Rollins comes down with like a bunch of other people as well. So, um, but he's kind of being a, a crony kind of guy at this point too. Yeah. Um, and so eventually, it's it, at the end of the day. I mean, towards the end, you actually do have a moment when you have eight or ten people in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, no. And, and again, I mean, like, if you look at the tape here, like, a lot of these wrestlers are here for 14 minutes, 16 minutes, 5, 4 minutes, 12. Um, but it's all the wrestlers past, like, the, the number number 15 spot, right? Number, after number 16, it's all these wrestlers are in there for a significant amount of time, at least. Yeah. Um, the exception to this being The Miz, who got out in 30 seconds, and Mr. Uh, no Shoes Matt Riddle. And when you say position number sixteen, you're like you're you're at that point like twenty five minutes into this thing. Um, at bare, like that. At, at minimum here, I mean, yeah. Brock Lesnar gets eliminated at twenty six twenty four. Yeah. Maybe a minute has passed in between there, but yeah, no, he again like twenty five minutes has passed in between here at minimum. Yeah. Uh, so so the first part of it goes very fast, and people are just in and out. And I, I get what you mean about two matches because it isn't until you get the second part that you actually get what some feels real, like a proper yeah. match. Before it, yeah. it's just. Beforehand, it's literally just Brock Lesnar just like, okay, and the next person gets thrown out. Okay, the next person we wait, and who's the next person? Maybe they'll be no. Okay, they get thrown out as well. Yeah, uh, the Royal Rumble is always well known for having a lot of mid carders as well who won't ever win, but they're there because you know they have to fill. It, they have to pad out the 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 entire ring. But it's actually kind 30. of a nice nice chance to see them, though, too. Yeah, the nice thing, these I mean, are some wrestlers that may not always get... Yeah, these yeah. are sometimes some wrestlers that may not get to have... Like, Shelton Benjamin won't be in a lot of 
pay-per-view, won't be in a lot of pay-per-view matches. Eric yeah. Rowan as well. There's not going to be in a lot of pay-per-view matches. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, as much as I think he should be, he's not going to get that a whole, a whole lot often, very often. So, I mean, like, for them, like, it's a nice chance to see them. And it's always the hope and dream that maybe they'll get this push that they need to get to that championship. Yeah. In this case, though, they actually did, they actually did what was right. They gave the win to Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is your Royal Rumble winner. Um, he's a returning wrestler. He used to be there in the early 2000s with a very, very kind of ugly gimmick. Not an ugly gimmick, but a very boring gimmick. Okay. Um, and so when he came back this time here, he's, you know, he's got this very much imposing look. He gained a lot of muscle mass in the intervening years, went off on an... In Japan, they call it an expedition. Like, you, you leave New Japan Pro Wrestling, you go out and you wrestle for other people, then come back um, to wrestle for New Japan. But in this case, he did something similar. He went on to the Indies, went to Japan, went to Mexico, learned new stuff, and came back a much better wrestler. And they're slowly getting into what his character is. He's, it's a little bit, a little bounce around, sort of. But now that he's won the Royal Rumble, I think he will be the guy to beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania to bring the championship I now, like Wrestlemania is April in April yes yeah. it's got a pirate theme this time They're... because it's in Tampa yes um, and so they, they better have a ship on the stage that's all I gotta say well somewhere anyway at least um, and so it, it's nice that they gave it to a wrestler that was kind of a bit of a mid Carter but now he's getting the push to, to get to the main event um what I was going to say is that as much as I like, as much as I hate that Brock Lesnar has the WWE Championship or the Universal Championship, but it's not on TV frequently enough to be of value or interest to anybody uh-huh. when it's not there, it does make for that when somebody finally does beat Brock Lesnar, it's all the credibility in the world because who else was going to actually ever beat Brock Lesnar? So, I mean, there is a sense so, of... So why is he so dominant? Well, it's because they allow him to be dominant. They, he he basically says how many, he only works a certain number of dates throughout the year, which is why he doesn't appear on television all that often. He only works a certain number of dates. Because if you're in that position, you can well, dictate he, that. Well, he's a big enough guy and he's a big enough uh, draw from when he was in UFC that he could do that. Yeah. Um, he's also just, you know, they've also just given him the opportunity to just be this imposing monster that has basically never really had a whole lot of challenges at all. I mean, like, he's not a wrestler that'll go for a long match. Like, for him to have, for him to literally be in this match for 25, for 26 minutes is unusual because a lot of his matches are only, like, four or five minutes long. Because yeah. he's not a very long, he's not a wrestler that lasts for very long. He's a very imposing wrestler, and he, he does all the right stuff, but he's not a very good technical wrestler. Okay. You know, he doesn't take, you know, he's not going to take a lot of bumps at all either um again like i he's the kind of wrestler you hate because he's not there and you have to hate him because he's there yeah um he gets the title and he doesn't have to defend it as often as perhaps somebody else would have to oh absolutely but again and and he's like everyone just hates him because he's not there a lot of the time but you watch him to see who's going to who's going to stop him and bring this title back to you know prominence yeah you know who's going to bring this title back to tv yeah. And they keep doing this for, for, they've done this now for a couple of years now, and I just hate it every single time they do it because it basically makes the secondary title the main title, which is then not really, and then it leaves all the top guys without anything to fight for. Yeah. Or the top guys are fighting for the for the mid-card title, and then the mid-card people have nothing to do. Yeah. So it's not, it's just not the way I wish it was done. Okay. So what do you Fair think enough. of the Royal Rumble, your first Royal Rumble? Okay, so so it, it's a, it's a great opportunity to see a lot of different a lot of different people, oh, um, yes. a lot a lot of different stars. Um, still, still kind of wonder about the economics of it. But if you're a fan of wrestling, I mean, what what better could you get than to get to see all you know eight you know in this case seventy eighty wrestlers and on it, on the same night? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Again, if you have a favorite wrestler, that's not a con- that's that's a mid carter. You know, hey, this is your chance you're to gonna, maybe you're see gonna, him. You're going to see him, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so totally, totally think it's. It, it, I thought it was pretty cool. And, and you always get like some surprise comebacks again. Like my my biggest regret in the women's uh, Royal Rumble is that they had Satine, so, you know they had Santino Morella come back as Santina Morella. Uh huh. Which there there there's an entire. It's a guy in drag and not yeah, even, we did and, see not, that. and not very convincing drag either. 
and was was in and out. Yeah, I basically got in. I kind of wonder what that was about because he just in and out. Some wrestle, some Royal Rumbles have more comedic elements in them sometimes. Uh huh. Um, I want this wanna... one. I didn't think did. No, this one. Neither of these really had very much of comedic elements on it at all. Um, we've had some years where there's been a lot more comedic. Uh, there's been some slight more comedic elements. Like there was a year um, in which one wrestler uh, who came in at like number like seven or eight didn't actually enter the actual ring until like the twelfth or thirteenth person came in because every single time he they like so, like one guy was leaving and beat him up and put him on the ground. So it basically kind of like stopped him from coming in. Yeah, because he had like. Oh no, I got hurt. Oh, let me get back up. Let me get back up. And then as soon as he would get back up, the next guy would come by. He was coming down the ring. He would kick him and put him back down again. Um, and it wasn't until like that's a pretty good gag. Actually. It, it, it's a. It was very funny at the time. I thought. I thought it was. I, uh, this is the uh, what was this? 2016. Yeah, I think this was 2016 um, because 2018 would have been when Shinsuke won it. Yeah, I think so. Um, but no, yeah, no. So it was it was very funny. He was a, he was a low card wrestler, so it wasn't yeah. one of those guys you ever saw on, on a pay per view very often. Anyways, very much if he was in the mid card, he was lucky, or if he had a bit that week, he was lucky. Um, so it was nice to see him. So it was that it, that was funny. The other matches have been funnier. The women have not been quite so funny just yet, but I also think they're trying to legitimize the women a lot more as well, and they want to really highlight all these really great athletic women at the end of the day i think well the cross dresser wasn't a wasn't a, a thing for me no I mean, it's kind of like oh okay the, so that comes from back in back during wrestlemania 25 which i think would have been 2008 they had a miss wrestlemania competition which was a over-the-top battle royale and the person to win it was this wrestler called santino morella who came in with all the steam in the world he actually yeah. he, he he was a some no name from a crowd that was like you know was a wrestler they hired the wwe hired and he won the intercontinental championship that his first night there and they gave him a you know he had a contract yeah. although he had one beforehand yeah and he would have been like great as his like great underdog wrestlers like look 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 at this guy look let's watch him go and they turned him into a completely comedic wrestler at the end of the day with this very kind of uh silly sort of Cobra thing where he would like puts this like sock puppet on his arm that's a snake yeah. and tries to poke people with it and then that somehow like is a finishing move for no particular reason and a very comedic wrestler so during the Miss Wrestlemania over the top right battle royale where the winner became Miss World Wrestlemania he was the one that won it as Santina Morella um, and so a, a lot of people especially from that year really disliked the fact that that was how that was handled um, because you had all these women who weren't going to be on the Wrestlemania card unless they were in this battle royale which has happened in years before yeah um, and they don't get anything and at the end of the day here they really didn't you know it wasn't a woman that they elevated or helped promote or got to, maybe we had yeah. the ability to use for later on no they promoted a comedian that was a that you know again it was a time in which they weren't treating women wrestling very seriously, seriously and it yeah. was very much an afterthought even though they had two championships for women so it was it wasn't a great time and to yeah. see it come back now was um as as much as I think WWE thought it would have been funny I found it rather tasteless yeah and and I I I was glad that he was in and out pretty quickly yeah and that very, that, very that wasn't that that, that wasn't prolonged cuz to me, it's just kind of uncomfortable. It's, it's not, it seems, it seems it's very, very mocking. It was very, yeah, and it was also, and again, that's why I thought it was also very tasteless at the end of the day, too. It's just like, yeah. you had all these women wrestlers that were doing this amazing job at the end of the day. And, it was fun to watch. And then you have this guy come in at number 29, and you were just like, really? Him? The, uh, yeah, so. That, if, if that's, my, if that's my gripe. It's that and the Bray Wyatt match being too much at a certain point. The, well, the, I mean, the yeah. ability to suspend disbelief got lost. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and I will say, um, you know, one of the things I enjoyed about the whole the whole uh, concept of the the Royal Rumble was that you saw different wrestlers who might other at other times be adversaries because of the setting mm -hmm. be for a a quick moment. Yes, and then they're somehow working together. Yeah. 
or for, wrestlers for that a are, quick moment. Or in some cases, there are wrestlers that are on different brands who may have not seen each other in a while. That sort of like you, you, dude. Yeah. You know, so you get you've gotten that in the past too with the uh, brand split. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I thought it was a very entertaining WrestleMania. Um, I don't like the Men's Royal Rumble, despite that I know a lot of other people really enjoyed the Men's Royal Rumble for what it was. Um, but um, but I'm glad the person who won is the person who won. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy about that. I like the Women's Royal Rumble. I think it was the... I, I like that Alexa Bliss was in it for a long time, because yeah. this is um, only her second... I like the fact that she was there. Um, I wish that it wasn't Charlotte Flair who won it at the end of the day. I wish it was somebody from NXT getting called up. Because I think Charlotte Flair's had enough time to be on the top so for a while. Was, so, so you think it was an opportunity that, that should have been... Well, and that's and that's what I think Royal, the Rumble, Royal Rumble has the opportunity to do. It has the opportunity to take somebody who um, who may be not as popular but a real fan favorite. Like if Kofi had won the Royal Rumble, everyone would have loved if Kofi had won the Royal Rumble because it would have been his chance to be a world champion. He eventually got yeah. that world championship one way or another. I, I'm very upset with the way they've handled that element of it, but you know, but I understand yeah. what's going on. Um, but I would have liked to have seen, you know, somebody, I would have liked to see Naomi win it. I would have liked to see Natalia win it. I would have liked to have seen somebody who's been a mid-card on the women's side, because women don't get a so whole lot of opportunity. So it's so a way to elevate. Yeah, it's a way to elevate, and especially for somebody who is um, who is a fan favorite but doesn't get a lot of time at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that would have been a great opportunity to, to make new stars and new people at yeah. the end of the day. Because, again, I mean, like, when we get to WrestleMania here, like it's going to be, it's probably going to be Bailey. It's probably going to be S- Sasha. It's probably going to be Becky. It's probably going to be Charlotte. Yeah. You know the four horse four horsewomen. Yes, cool. But it's not as if we haven't seen these ladies at this position already beforehand. Yeah. Um, and so I think it'd be far more beneficial at the end of the day if it was somebody that, you know, we hadn't seen here yet. You know, a new random element, and without. Ronda Rousey in the picture to be this dominant force as she was in, you know, in last year's WrestleMania. Yeah. I think you having Shayna Baszler, who was a dominant force in NXT, stepping up and being like, I'm here to, you know, I'm tired of watching people wrestle and not, you know, her just coming yeah. in and just being this new dominant force in there that really shakes up the entire environment would have been fun and interesting. Yeah. Especially if she was not, especially if she was being coy about, who she was going to go after. She was going after Charlotte, or she going after Becky, or going after um, uh, Bailey. And I think if she went after Bailey and or Becky and Becky lost, it'd be all the momentum for those two to have, just like fighting one another and doing other stuff with each other, which I think would be interesting. New stuff in new times. Yeah. So, but this was the Royal Rumble. You liked it. I, I enjoyed it. it. So who are we seeing a week from Friday? So we're going to watch SmackDown on February second, on February seventh, uh-huh. um, and we'll come back and review it as well, so we can talk about what we saw there. Okay. Um, Any idea what the card is? Not just yet. No. Oh, okay. So um, I'm sure we'll see Bailey. I hope we get because to see she's the, from San Jose. From from San Jose, uh, and I hope the boos are amazing. You're you're going to love the. Boo- we'll see if she gets actually booed actually because she's from San Jose. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Uh, I hope we see The Fiend. I really want to see Bray Wyatt. Okay. Because um, I've actually met him on a couple occasions when he's checked into my hotel. Oh, very good. So, um, he's not a small person. None of them are small people. It, but again, when you see him in the ring with one another, like, they look they look like normal human beings. Yeah. And then you see him, and it's like, Bray Wyatt, you got to remember, he's six foot five. He's a big guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and with the hair as well, with all those dreads, like, ooh. So yeah, no, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see when wrestle when the WWE comes to San Jose, and I'm super excited to see if any wrestlers have to check in. Nobody's scheduled yet, so okay. So, okay. but we'll see. It'll be a fun yeah. week. So thank you so much for following us here. Uh, next week, we are going to talk about Gunpla because so we're going to go back to Gundam and we're going to build oh. some Gunpla here. Yes, because uh, we do have those model kits that we need to we build. Do. Yeah. And after that, again, we'll do we'll do our SmackDown feel, our feels on that SmackDown episode. And again, you'll get to see another show here, which will be fun. And then we we might go back to World of Warcraft after that, or at least a, online. I am I am like totally down for that. <laughs> I want to be, be my little panda. 
Excellent. So we're going to have all the show notes on our website here at nerdtutorialpodcast.com. We'll list down all the... We'll also link to the Wikipedia article as well that we've been following here because it's got great information on just the event itself as well as all like the pre-show elements and all the... Uh, Breakdown of all the uh, storylines going into the going into the into Royal Rumble, um, and then you can also follow us at Nerd Tutorial at Facebook dot com forward slash Nerd Tutorial Podcast, where you can continue the conversation when we post the uh, episode, or and you can also follow me on Twitter at Nerd Tutorial Pod, at, excuse me on Twitter at Nerd underscore Tutorial. Where we're following all the things that we've ever talked about. Um, including some other subcategories of that as well. So, like, we have Magic the Gathering and eSports for Magic the Gathering, or we have uh, WWE, and we also have uh, Dungeons & Dragons and another podcast that does Dungeons & Dragons as well, which I found was kind of interesting. And Star Wars and, and Star, Star Trek. Wars. Yep, and the whole of our, all of our topics. Are here. we going to hit the new Picard soon? Yeah, I would okay. like to, actually, because I've heard devastating think... things. And I don't... Oh, have you? I've heard... I've... I, I, I'm, in, I'm curious to see what it's like. I really am. Um, I, I, I don't like hearing preconceived notions and people telling me about it before I've seen it at all. Uh, but I'm super interested to watch that when it comes out. So, okay. um, but that's it for us this week. And thanks so much. We'll see you guys again next week. Bye. Bye.